our world will never be the same. I've heard that phrase numerous times over the past month. The coronavirus has changed our perspectives. This virus has identified that we are more vulnerable than what we were aware. It also revealed that we are more adaptive than what we thought possible. Over the centuries, the church has been called to minister, that is to serve in the midst of many crises. Plagues, famines, natural disasters, and man-made disasters have been a part of humanity's experience throughout recorded history. Someone once defined a crisis as an event that occurs where former coping mechanisms are no longer applicable. Because our former coping mechanisms are not effective, we're knocked off center, and we are to some degree at a loss for what to do. This creates a mental and emotional crisis with accompanying stress and anxiety. Although our ministry is decidedly unique during this crisis, we've observed a wide variety of creative means by which pastors, ministers, and believers are touching lives and serving the local church as well as demonstrating God's love. Romans 8.28 is our hope and assurance. We know that all things work together for good to those who love God. Although physically visiting congregants is ill-advised during this crisis, this crisis provides both an opportunity and a need to connect one-on-one -on -one with families from our churches. Peter admonishes his readers to shepherd the flock, which necessarily implies pastoral care. We cannot underestimate the value of a call to connect through or coordinate personal and individual touch points. Smaller churches can really shine in this regard. Larger churches will make use of their organizational skills to divide and delegate the task so that it becomes more manageable. Practice your listening skills by asking a good question. How are you getting along? What's been the greatest challenge you've faced during the COVID crisis? And offering a compassionate ear and praying with those in your sphere of ministry is greatly needed at this time. You see, friends, pastoring is more than being a CEO of a church. I've done a lot of reading in the past three years. In the church world, I see a debate that has risen regarding the role and culture of ministry. On the one hand, there are a lot of books, blogs, messages, and degree programs on the topic of leadership. Without a doubt, part of the role of being a pastor is leading. Leading is inherent in the metaphor of being a shepherd. We easily see that in the 23rd Psalm where the shepherd of our soul leads us to green pastures beside calm waters. He leads us in the paths of righteousness. But this leadership is not absent of pastoral care. Anointing with oil, guiding, and defending are all part of the pastoral persona. One author that I greatly admire, Paul Borden, said that pastors are not called to be chaplains, that is, caregivers. He stated that Ephesians 4 indicates that the body of Christ is supposed to perform that task. Instead, the author proposed that pastors are primarily to be leaders. Well, Leonard Sweet pushed back against this trend in his book, I Am a Follower. Sweet commented that we've been told our entire lives that we should be leaders that we need more leaders, leaders, leaders. But Sweet says the truth is, the greatest way to create a movement is to be a follower and show others how to follow. Following is the most underrated form of leadership in existence. Now, I understand that Borden is pushing back against the unreasonable demands of some churches or church members who want a pastor who's more like a babysitter. Their expectations cannot easily be satisfied, if ever satisfied, and the pastor is relegated to a people-pleaser model of ministry, or should I say, people-pleaser model of misery. Personally, I don't see an either-or option here. I believe that a pastor must give care, teach, train, develop, and deploy other people to be in the ministry of caregiving. This is in Sweet's words, showing others how to follow, living out true discipleship. 
We also realize that in order to develop healthy believers, caring must be a mutually shared activity. A person who's always in the receiving mode is often relationally impaired and will drain others of their energy. When a church is filled with a lot of whining and crying and complaining, it's perhaps a sign that believers have not been discipled well, or perhaps that they have reverted to self-centeredness, and there needs to be discipleship renewal in their lives. During COVID-19, we are seeing an unprecedented opportunity to connect with people personally and to connect believers with one another in small group formats. Tom Rayner identified in his blog, 10 pieces of good news we are hearing from churches during the pandemic is that church members for the most part are enthusiastically adopting video conferencing. Additionally, Rayner reports that some churches have seen huge participation gains for their small group ministries. Perhaps COVID-19 will actually benefit the church by merging technology with discipleship in an interactive, participatory way. I think that this virus has nudged some to be far more engaged in connecting than they ever imagined possible. Others have been bumped from mediocrity to creativity. The worst response to the COVID-19 pandemic would be to disengage and wait for it to pass. As a network, we've watched three of our smaller churches move through the pastoral candidating process and elect a pastor utilizing Zoom or Google Hangout. <laughs> what hath God wrought? Technology doesn't have to be impersonal. This season doesn't have to leave us in a holding pattern. Because services are online, we have new opportunities to personally engage with people in ways that were not employed before the virus. My wife invited her cousin to church last week online, and her cousin attended my son's church 264 miles from her home. That would not likely have happened earlier. Ministering, sharing our faith, or inviting someone to a watch party, discipleship, and pastoral care are all possible despite social distancing. Our world will never be the same. In some ways, I hope not. By the grace of God, He will work this out for our benefit and for His kingdom's benefit. Until next time, God bless you and keep on ministering.